Hey everybody, it's good to see you. Thank you for coming. I feel good that we're together again. Uh, we're all on beautiful lands. As for me, I'm in the village of Caltag. This is the land of my father's people and um, it's Athabascan land. So I'm here at my cousin's house and this is the week of our stick dance. It's our week long memorial potlatch. And I, since it's our first time coming back together after taking a week off, I wanted to share with you about a little bit about our potlatch and make it interactive so that we're still learning language together. So, Kajin Yagi Yaya Yagi Kintanak Kayani Desi Naskjin Kat Katlik Elithia Des. This is Friday, March 31st. It's the last day of March. And uh, we go, week 12 of our class. This is a little bit of information about the day. And when you say what, when you want to say which day it is, uh, in Tlingit, you count it by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, starting on Monday. So Friday is the fifth day, Kajin Yagi. So go ahead and uh, mute your mics and we'll, you can repeat after me, starting from the top here where I have the word for today, the words for today, Ya Yagi. So repeat after me, Ya Yagi. Yeah, 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 this last one, I'm going to start at the end with Yawahi. So just repeat after me. Yawahi Yadis. Yawahi Yadis. Mm -hmm. Now, the way that I counted the days in this example was I said there's three tens and one. So that's why we have Naskjin Kat Katlaik. So I'll repeat that after me. Nask jin kat katlaik. Nask jin kat And now the whole line. Nask jin kat katlaik yawa hi ya dis. So um, for those of you who are new to class, this word yawahi is a verb that's specific for days to pass. That's why we don't have to use the word yagi in this phrase, because when we say, when I say 30 and one have passed this month, um, this verb yawahi is specific to days. So we already know we're talking about days. But yeah, it's our first time back. Um, I'm gonna wanna hear your voices and hear how your week was. And then I'm gonna share with you a little bit about uh, where I am and what we're doing this week. Cause it's a really busy week and it's super fun and uh, really a lot of hard work. And it just feels good to be here. So um, I wrote this phrase that I want you to start internalizing over time. Um, this is a, a pattern that you should internalize that's specific to gathering together. So the first, the very last word in this line is where I want to start. And it's wutudda'at. So go ahead and repeat that after me. Wutudda'at. 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 Oh my gosh, what am I gonna make? So when you hear it, um, Together with these words that precede it, you should just memorize that as a chunk that this is means we're gathering together. 
And so we'll start with whoosh. Uh, repeat after me. Whoosh kanach wut wut de ad. And I'm going to do a quick stop of my screen share because I need to turn on my sound setting. There we go. Okay, here we go. And so jumping back to this phrase, um, this last, this, well, it's the last word I'm showing you. It's the first word in the phrase. So everyone repeat after me. So, so. So. That's the part where it, we're, I'm mentioning it, that it's happening again. So you notice the difference in word order. In English, uh, we put again last. In Tlingit, you put it first. So repeat the whole phrase after me. And to just give you an idea of the verb, since some of you are starting to use the online verb database, um, I just want to point this verb out to you so that you're you're taking it from a conversational context. And I also want you to be able to look it up. So I'm going to take you to the online verb database. And we'll be using this today um, when you help me caption some photos. But who knows, looking at this verb, who knows what the verb root is? You can shout it out, you can type it in the chat, raise your hand, whatever is comfortable for you. The verb root is ought. And the reason I ask this is that when we start looking at verbs, we, we access them through the root. And so it's the core meaning of the word and that's where that's our starting point and I'll show you what I mean. So we have this verb root ought. A verb root mostly occurs at the end of a verb unless there's a suffix after it, but in this case there's not. And so I'm just gonna copy that and I'll open up the online verb database and I'll paste it in my search bar. So I typed in ought and it jumped me to the verb roots that start with ought. Um, for people who want this resource who don't have it yet, I'm gonna put the link in the chat yeah. so you can open it up. And there you go. But these blue, um, these blue text verb roots are where we start when we look things up and I'm looking at the top one. You can see there's two verb roots for ought and they ought and they have pretty different meanings. And I generally look through the string of English meanings for something that's in the ballpark of what I'm looking for. I see it right here, gather together. And so I'm expanding the blue highlight or the, the blue text verb root. So you just click it and and there's uh, you can see all the different yellow highlighted meanings. Now I'm going to scroll down until I see either gather or else that string of words that I just taught you. So um, as I mentioned in previous classes, Tlingit makes a lot of use out of one verb root. And you can see, you know, some of these meanings in English are similar to each other. And then some of them are pretty different. And so that's where we start to pay attention to the, the, the sounds that precede the verb root. And that's about as much as I'm gonna explain for now. I just want you to start thinking about it. Um, the, the different words and sounds that come before a verb root to give it a specific meaning. So these look like math equations, um, but what you can do is keep your eye out for sounds that you recognize and scroll. So I'm gonna scroll down. And here I see my meaning I'm looking for, to gather together, oops, um, to assemble, wait, 
um, to gather together, assemble, or congregate. And here we can see in this theme that wush kanach, blank, blank, de'at, is specific to people assembling together. You can, if you want to use this verb in different um, modes, like depending on who gathered together, did we gather together, did they gather together, are we gathering together, did we not gather together, those are the different modes you can scroll through and you'll see that they have linguistic, oops, linguistic names for the verb modes. You don't need to memorize all these right away. It's just like over time you'll start to get familiar with them. But here's ours. So go ahead and repeat it one more time after me. Can I ask a question? So are, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I, whoosh, I, I see a lot, and I thought whoosh was together. It does. Does whoosh have meaning on its own, or is it only used in combination with other words? Yeah, that's a good question. So let's kind of explore that together. So if I have a question about a word that's not a verb, um, I'll I'll highlight it, copy it. And then I'll go over to the dictionary. And so I'll put this in the chat as well. Um, for people that need this resource, I'm just gonna link it here. And I'll open up my uh, search bar. Oops. Okay, and now I'm gonna type in whoosh. And this is like what I call the, the research um, phase of looking words up. Um, as, you, as you can see in my search bar, it appears 190 times. I'm going to try to scroll to the list where it has whoosh amongst others. And here it is. So, um, so in this example, it's listed under the entry for ka, which just means like, since this is a low tone ha, it just means like it's a possessive pronoun referring to peoples in general, like peoples, uncles, peoples, aunts. Um, whoosh or wooch could mean each other's. So that's one way that it can have meaning is belonging to each other. So let's see what else we get. So it can also appear as an object. And so I'm kind of, I'm starting to see it. Like I, you know, maybe I can't give you a specific direct like definition, but for me as a learner, this is what I want to share is how to, how to recognize patterns. So I'm starting to notice it keeps getting listed with um, pronouns. So the possessive ones were ugh, um, how to, now it's being listed with object pronouns. Okay, so I'm gonna. What this tells me is I'm gonna start to use this where an object is used in terms of um, a person. So let's keep looking. But but what are we noticing so far about whoosh in terms of its meaning? Together, more than one kind of yeah, collection. Yeah, collection. It's having to do with people together, um, reciprocating. And I'm gonna see if I can go. Okay, it can also be used as a postpositional. So it appears here as ka e. Let's see what else we get. Independent pronoun. Um, I'm going to see if I can go to the entry for whoosh. Independent pronoun. Here it is. So whoosh could mean, like you mentioned, each other. And then 
Here they list all the different ways. It could be reciprocal, possessive, meaning belonging to each other, used to show a relationship between things, including ownership, kinship term origination. Yeah. Okay. Um, does that help? Okay. Good question. I'm glad you asked. <clears throat> And then it looks like they list it in, t in terms of like each part of speech that it appears as as well. So that's cool. Um, so that's how we looked up this verb phrase, that's how we looked it up in the online verb database. Okay, so I have some things to share with you about my family and uh, my time here in Caltech. Uh, but I wanted to ask Yuhan, Wasa Yi Yiti Yuhan, how are you all? Maybe just say um, how you're feeling, Achtu Yike, Achtu Sugu, and then you can, if you feel like sharing a little bit about how your week has been, um, Let's just take time since we're back together again after a week off to reconnect. Wasa yeti. Okay. Okay. Thank you for sharing with us. Just I just wanted to hear your voices. Um, okay. As for me, I'm in Caltech now. Uh, and I'm here for stick dance. I asked my aunties and uncles, is it okay to share about stick dance in my class? And they said, yes. Um, we are careful about um, talking about it in the right way so that we are respectful. But basically stick dance or heal is our week long memorial potlatch for our loved ones who have passed on. And so, um, I just want to share with you a little bit about it. So, our language is called the Naka, um, in English, it's called the Koyakan Athabaskan. My father's people are of Caltech. The Naka Kaina Hia Yuduasak We Kuik. So in Klinge, you often hear the term Kuik for potlatch. It just means people are invited. And in our way in the Naka, we call our potlatch Hia. And in English, we call it stick dance. Um, Haaniaya. Um, this is our town, Caltech. Ach Atidiyawa. This is my my auntie's house. Chadkoa ach tlak hiti ki yi chadyati. As for me, I'm staying with my my cousin Jessica. Um, 
Fei is the word for fishnet, and in this picture I went with my cousin's husband, Cal, to go check the fishnet. And um, this is on Yukon, this is on the Yukon River. Yukon is the Naka for river, so the Yukon River is named river in our language. Right here is where you see the village of Caltech, where it is. And um, the Kaiwu, the fishnet, is underneath the ice here on the river. And so this day we caught. Dakun khat wa tuwad la kwe yagi. Chi fish neskwa wa chi fish ka take we lush. We got. Four fish that day, three were chi fish and one was lush. Lush khwasa'i, I cooked the lush. And then, we chi fish tin nakhla da yen hao sene. We made, um, or yen wutu sene. We made fish ice cream out of the chi fish. But to check the fish net, you have to shovel out. Uh, the snow and then chip the ice so that you can get to the pole to untie you untie one end of the fish net and then pull it through on the other side. Uh, ice like frozen frozen river or frozen water is how you would say ice in this situation. So let's practice some of these. Um, go ahead and repeat after me. Ha'ani. 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 And Kewu. And this is a longer phrase, so I want to start with the verb at the end. And go ahead and repeat this verb after me. Wutu wad lak. Wutu wad lak. That's the word for we succeeded or we got. If I want to say we got fish, that's where I say khat. So repeat this part after me. Khat wutu wad lak. Khat wutu wad lak. And then what's this last word? Dagun. Wasa duasak dagun deka khenach. So repeat the whole phrase after me. Dagun khat wutuad lak. Dagun khat wutuad lak. Ah. So this is my Auntie Jo, and she's preparing the chi fish for nukhlada. That's our word for fish ice cream. And so she's my paternal auntie, so that's why I call her Akhat. Um, go ahead and repeat that after me, Akhat. Uh, 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 this next word ajeri is so jeri is scales, but scales have to belong to something. In in English we refer to it in the language as being inalienable. It just means you can't separate it. So scales and tlinget don't just exist on their own. They're somebody's or, or something's scales. And so that's why I put a uh, here. Um, 
a refers to the animal. And we started to look at that when, in our discussion about pronouns, independent pronouns, or possessive pronouns, I mean, since the scales belong to the fish, um, we say ajayqi. So repeat that after me, ajayqi. 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 Um, when we talked about this in our, a few weeks ago, uh, we talked about the difference between talking when in possession when you're talking about human humans and versus non-humans um, or animals or plants uh, in, in, in if we're talking about humans we would say duh so like a hand is also inalienable it belongs to me it's my hand so this would be a jin um, I say ach jin because I'm a human. I, I refer to myself using human pronouns. If it was like an animal, I, I would say a jin instead of du jin. If I'm talking about someone's hand, I would say du jin. Um, if I'm talking about <coughs> animal, a uh, And then this last word is she's scraping its scales. She's scraping. So it's a kakas. So repeat this after me. A kakas. A kakas. Us. So when you make fish ice cream, you scrape the if with tea fish. My auntie scraped off its scales and then um, we gutted it and then chunked it into steaks, boiled it. After you boil it, you cool it off and then you drain all the water out of it. You squeeze out and what you're going for is an end product like this so this is dried up fish flakes hand squeezed and um, my I went to my auntie Violet's house her fish was already dried and squeezed and she made I kept her company while she made nachlada or fish ice cream so now we're gonna start captioning some of these photos together I captioned a few of them um, when you caption a photo, you want to keep it really simple as a language learner. And so I'm not going to go in and, you know, um, make a really complicated sentence about it, but what's something we might say in English or thing if you already have the words in your mind about this photo. And it's okay if it takes time. Um, you can look through your resources, think about it. You don't have to rush. Do you do you call it um at ishi? Is it actually dried? Um, maybe. Let's look at that. Or so. Uh huh. I guess they have boiled, dried, and half dried. Okay. Are you looking in the dictionary? Um, Jake, it's um I have the the old uh, beginning workbook, so the page number might not be right. It's Jake hundred ka Jake Goshuk one twenty nine. Okay. In this book, but maybe an older version of it. Yeah, it's um. Okay, so I'm going to go to that chapter. When they have like, um, okay. Okay, this is good. Okay, so what we're doing is so, um, Utaka thought of a phrase, so I saw her flipping through her book and we're looking through a resource. This is often how I caption photos is I recall something, I look it up and I, I'll just pull from something. So we're in the beginning thing at workbook. I'll put this in the chat for folks who need it. And we're gonna go to the chapter was called Wasashti Dinuk. Scrolling down. 
Okay, wasash didunuk. And then that means how do you feel? So let's click on this chapter and see what we find. Did it look like this for you, Wutaka? Mm, uh, it was toward the end where they were talking about Akhit um, Uaha uh, being hungry. And then they had oh. food words. I don't know if. Okay, if it's not in here, we'll look in. I know. So there were we'll pictures of uh, different foods. I'll look in the I'll look in that. And other people can chime in too if you have other ideas. Mine's taking a minute to load. And while that's loading, I'll look in the, oh, the dictionary too. Um, zoom, zoom out. Fish. Okay, I see this verb, fish. fish. Dried. Um, this might be more for like strips. Let's see what else we find. I would almost say you would use the verb root hook. Oh, it smells like dried fish. This one's a little bit different. Um, the process for drying fish is like to hang, cut it into strips or thin pieces and hang it to dry to eat it that way. This is like a little bit, this is more like we wrung it out. This, this kind of looks like it would work because you can also use it for fritta laundry. So maybe we'll say it dried. <clears throat> so we could even, so uwa hook is a whole sentence if we want it to be. It means it dried. So I'm going to use this one. Oops. Oops. Okay. We will hook it dried. We will hook. Okay. And this one I didn't caption. And we made fish ice cream. So this one I already captioned, and um, I said echad nechlad yeyalsene. So this is a Danaka word. I'm gonna italicize it. And let's start with. Oh, this is a. This is a voiceless L, which in. The naka we mark with a bar because we also have a voiced L. Okay, repeat just this word nachlada after me. Nachlada. 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 Okay. And then the whole sentence. Ach at nachlada ye alsini. Ach at nachlada ye. Okay. Um, this one is a picture of moose meat that the men um, got and brought to us. And so for one whole day, we worked on it. We cut this whole leg up into thin strips so that we could make dry meat out of it. And 
It's a lot of work, but this is how we prepare for potlatch. So this one, um, disk hajit hasawati. It means they gave us um, moose meat. So go ahead and repeat that after me. Disk hajit hasawati. Uh, and I saw in the chat someone wrote Nachlara uh, Ariduaha Katsu Kunakuig Kaha or Nachlara. I'm eating a lot of Nachlara right now because uh, they, they sh we put it in small cups and share it at our evening potlatch every night. Bunachish. Um, it just means I'm hungry for Um, I should tell more about how we make it. Um, this is my auntie whipping up the... Traditionally, you would use tallow and oil, and she's using lard and oil. But um, her sister told her to do it really slow, be patient. So. Um, you put it in a big bowl and you whip it up like this and then you grind it up so there's no little chunks left until it's really smooth and whipped up. Shaksani Ki Kanaka Shirley Kendall told me they do the same thing for soap berries. But after it's all smooth and whipped up, then she adds the sugar and keeps continuing to mix it until you don't feel any little grains so it's just sweet without feeling the grains of the sugar um, and after that you add the, the um, fish so put that in and mix it and then berries or if it like this year was a bad berry year there weren't a lot of berries and um, you can use raisins and it's still good but Usually you would use giga or um, kanata in Tlinga, um blueberries or salmon berries. We we call them salmon berries up here because they you harvest them when the salmon are coming up the river. But down there, I think people call them cloud berries. Um, And then you just let it sit, you refrigerate it and let it sit all the more, all the flavors soak together. That's really good. I've been eating a lot of it. <laughs> okay. Um, in this photo, I asked everyone, can I take a picture? Because we were just working hard. Um, my Auntie Annie was baking bread all day. Uh, we were cutting. I w this was my workstation, I was cutting moose meat into these strips and seasoning it for dry meat. My auntie Jo was cutting it for me to, in chunks so I could work from that. Um, my cousin Marion came in, or my friend Marion came in, visited. My, my cousin Violet is here actually wringing out fish for ice cream. So we were all hard at work. Um, my auntie here is taking a quick break because she's been when, during HIA, you're up really late. Like last night, I was up until maybe 12.30 or 1 in the morning because we we come together for potlatch for dinner and then we go home for a little bit, clean the hall, and come back for our dancing. That's when we sing our memorial songs for the people who passed. It's a chance for us to grieve together and then also have fun together, and we do it for a full week. And so you're up late and then you're up early in the morning the next day, making sure you've cooked all your food and everything's together, that your sewing is done. We, we dress people to honor them, to honor our loved ones who pass. So we make them really nice traditional um, beaver hats and medzahalan, um outer coverings and gloves. And so <laughs> it's a week long of like hard work, but also a lot of fun and it helps us grieve together. In one night, I find myself crying and laughing and everything all at once. Uh, so we have a picture here. Um, any ideas for a caption for this one? 
Oh, I see in the, um, okay, I see in the chat somebody mentioned mint for cloudberry. And so that's the thing at word for cloudberry. And da -da -da. Okay. There's definitely uh, whoosh. Whoosh seems to fit in this picture, maybe. Ah, yeah. yeah I'm gonna okay. So let's whoosh, whoosh so, maybe. Ah, okay. I love that. So whoosh jean. Now I typed this in, and this is what I do all the time. I typed it into the best of my memory, and I'm gonna spell check it now. So I'll copy this and go into the dictionary and type it in and see how close I got. Whoosh jean. I don't even see it. So let's try putting another period. No. Maybe another. Maybe a space. Whoosh jean. Um, sometimes I'll just start deleting from the end until I get close. So we know whoosh. What if we put. What's this one? Whoosh. Okay. So I typed whoosh space J, and now I see it here in an example phrase under the entry for whoosh. And so I'm going to use this spelling, and it says whoosh jean means hands together. And that's cool, I like that. So we're going to copy it, and this way I know I have correct spelling and the meaning. So whoosh jean hands together. Okay. That's really good, thank you. I love it. Um, I need to spell check this word and then I'll put the caption too. So I'm just taking you through my process. I started to caption all of these to have ready for class and then I was like, mm, we should work on this together because this is the same exact process. If you want to make a photo journal and practice captioning your photos, this is how you do it. So I'm going to copy this word. Um, this is a phrase I put together to the best of my memory. Now I want to spell check words. So let's see how close we got. A hat. Okay. It looks like the spelling is correct. It's a pinched S, high tone, A, and then XW. I'm going to go to the entry just for its O and see what it says. It's o. Okay. We're, we're seeing like lots of different kinds of hats. This is why I like typing in a word like this in the dictionary because it takes you through a lot of different vocabulary words you learn along the way. A hat that flies up is the word for umbrella. Okay. Hat or cap. Oh, cool. There's a word for the sukpak and unang hats. And we're getting close. We're in the S's. But I just, I don't know, I just like to look at all the meanings along the way when I search for a word. Okay, so here's a word for just hat in general. And go ahead and repeat this one after me. So it's a pinched S, so that S is going to sound real sharp, and it'll go flow right into the high tone A. And then it's a rounded XW, so that round that XW sounds like whoosh. So go ahead and repeat after me. It's oh. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's one more time. Uh, so. Uh, okay. That sounds. Uh, Ow. Okay. And let's see how I can move this little situation. I don't know how. Yeah, that kind of works, doesn't it? Move this picture over. 
and then I'll I'll put the English as well. My, how would I translate this one? Achtlag. How would I translate that? My sister. Yeah. Oh, uh, good enough to use my sister. So. I'm going to put the first part, my sister, and then, yes, uh, what does this mean? Oh, we know is cat, right? So I'm going to put a question word for ya, since we haven't heard what ya means yet, and then I'm going to put hat. So what how would we translate ya? Yeah. The fever or wait. What's that? I was thinking it's an animal name. I was like, is that a beaver? Or, but I, I don't think Oh you're close. Yeah, you're close. Da is like um what are those little weasels? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. um, ermine, yeah. Ermine, yeah. This one, this ya, way, hey, is from our first chapter, and not everybody was here for that part, but, and it was a while back, but um, there's a really good section in the beginning thing at workbook about these words, particles. Are they particles? Let's look at them. So in the first chapter, Dasaya, we can go to the section on particles and find in these words, ya, he, we, and you refer to spatial awareness, so sense of space. And so you, I, tangi, a means the one who's speaking. And so if the person who's speaking is talking to something right close to them, they would say, yeah. Or if they're referring to something like this uh, hat, it would be, yeah. So um, if it's a little bit out of, maybe just out of their reach, it would be, he. Maybe like across the table or something or across the room, we. And then out the window way far yonder would be, you. Yeah. And so, ya yeah, or ya yeah, is just means this right here. And so, this is on page 25 for folks who are curious. So, I would translate this ya yeah, as ya yeah, sa as this hat. And then we have this yan ausene. Is anyone familiar? Have you heard this verb yet? Oops. Sorry. My sister did something to this hat. She yen ausenate it. What is that? What's that? Sewing? Is this Yeah, well does nay have to do with work? Yeah, oh uh, so let's look at so if we look at yan ausene, this verb, um the last part is the verb root, and I'm gonna look it up in the verb database. And so I'll close the last one we looked at just so that it's a little cleaner, neater to look at. And I'll type it in nay. So just to give folks an idea of the different ways that think it makes use of the verb root nay, I'm going to expand it. But just looking initially, we can see, oh, OK, that could be give, take, show, have and fix, be ready to finish, dress up, do our work. OK, so I'm starting to get a feeling of like this is about making something. And then um, there's a separate category of meanings for weave to knit, crochet, and respect. So I'm going to look up 
Nay. Um, one of you mentioned that has to do with like working or making. And the, the only thing I want to highlight to you at this point is that what comes right before the verb root is this SI, this S sound. And this is going to give me a clue in my search of which one I'm looking for. So anytime you see a theme with a lowercase s um, or a sound like y or s, um, that's telling you that you actually hear that sound in the word. These uppercase ones are they're short for object and subject. Those are something you'll you'll put an entire you won't put an a uh or a s uh sound. You'll put a ha or ha. Um, but this s sound appears, and then we don't have da or ye, but I'll kind of look and see, like, do I see what I was going for in here? Um, fix it. Okay. Actually, I think what we want is finished. And so in this case, I'm seeing, oh, you know what, there's no suh. I put a suh. I guessed that there's a suh in there when I type that, but now I'm seeing, oh, she completed it. Yun. So what would we say? Yun uwane. It's ready. Hmm. Yeah, I'll have to look into this one a little bit more. Work on it, do it, work it. It's kind of going for finish. Oh. Finished it. Oh, here. Actually, I was right. She finished it. Yen Elsene. And then this is high tone EI. Okay, Yen Elsene. So I just need to fix the high tone E there. Okay, I need to watch the time. Normal set, but. So anyway, we have akhlaq ya khsaf yan alsame, my sister, and what do, what do they have for the meaning? She finished this hat. And we can continue this. I have a few more pictures from Potlash, just making food and going to the hall. But, um, any comments or questions uh, to close out our class? Thank you for sharing. This was really fun to do this too. And I love the pictures and and glad everything's going well for you in in that in your ceremonies. Yeah, thank you for sharing your this journal, photo journal, and um, other ones too. Um, I feel like it's really inspired me to to do that as well. And I don't know if I would have done that as like a consistent practice had you not had that example. So okay, I'm glad that's helpful. And um, if folks want to start photo journals and you have questions along the way, I'm here to answer questions both in class and if you have emails or you want to send me an email or meet outside of class, we, we might be able to start making time for that too. Any other comments or questions from folks? There was a comment in the chat. If you would go ahead and read that, please. Oh, you could be. So in the chat, there's a comment that says, and um, for folks who aren't familiar, you might see that it's like written a little bit differently from what you're used to. It's just a different orthography for the same language. So um, my friend Sky Diu understands both and she uses both. Um, but what it means is I'm really grateful for your work. So, Okay. 
there's no more comments or questions, I'll let you go so you can move on to the rest of your day. And I hope you have a good rest of your day. Uh, our next meeting will be next Friday, 10 a.m., same Zoom link. And Gwyneth Chish, Yohan, Suyeyi Kwasatin. Gwyneth Chish. Gwyneth Chish. Tish, yeah, again, Tish. It's a great uh, class today. Thank you. Tish. Ah, uh, okay. Good enough, Tish. Good enough, Tish. Ah. Uh.